Guys, I'm gonna throw this at the beginning of the video. I'm like really tired when I recorded this and I still am, I'm about to go to sleep. Um, so this is more just like a reflection of how I did at the tournament and how the team works. I'm not, I, I'm gonna like fumble on my words because I'm falling asleep. Uh, but this is gonna be a video where I just explain how the team works um, casually. I'm not gonna go super in depth. It's a very basic team, uh, but it's a team that I built. So I wanted to go through my thought process with it. So yeah, keep that in mind watching the video. Sorry if it's not organized but this team also isn't going to matter in a few days because we're going into regulation C. So I have to prep for Fort Wayne. So yeah, uh, I'll see you in the video. Thanks. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. I just got back from Charlotte Regionals yesterday. I had a full day of work today. I got home at like 2 a.m. I'm exhausted. So immediately after this, knocked out. Uh, but I want to talk about my experience at Charlotte, uh, what I learned, how like my little training arc's been going, because it's been going pretty well, I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually really happy with uh, the effort I put in uh, and the people who have worked with me, so we'll get into that. Uh, but this is gonna be like a very basic overview of my team. My team isn't anything too fancy, it's a very fundamentals-based team. Uh, I wanted to bring it back to basics, but I did put some flair in it that is very typical of me for some reason, I just can't get over it. Like I, I have to run something stupid every time, but yeah, we're gonna talk about my team, how well I did at Charlotte, uh, the match I had on stream, I'll briefly cover that. And yeah, before we do that, if you guys enjoy this same point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Answer my comment question of the day. What do you think of the team? What can I do better? Obviously, I know what I can do better. I, I, I have played, I played, I know what to do better, but I wanna hear your guys' opinions as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So before we start, there you go. Oh, that's not it. Uh, let's show you guys the rental code because I am just gonna make it a rental. Granted, this is the last regional before we go to series three or regulation C in like three days here, four days. So I'm already preparing for Fort Wayne. Uh, that's already underway so this will only be legal for a couple more days so use it while you can there's the code top right don't comment about it i know some of you will anyways but yeah uh now let's get into uh the team breakdown well i guess actually let's do this first let's do this first so how did i do overall um actually wait hold on <laughs> give me a second give me a second because i actually have to open up arcanine labs uh to show how i did overall but i also don't want to like give my login information so if we go here, events and tournaments, Pokemon events, um, sign in. Sorry, I'm like literally signing in right now. I'm not editing this out, I'm too tired. Okay, here we go. Player dashboard and the Charlotte Regional Championships. Here is how I did. So, if we look here, uh, you can see that my round one versus Helton, uh, I won that one, round two. One versus Evan Smith, then Matt Coyle, then Alex, uh, I don't, I think it's pronounced Quan, Kian, I don't know how to pronounce it. Let me know how you pronounce it, Alex, I actually don't know. Um, and then I had a win versus Durin, Durin's TV. If you don't know, he's a Twitch streamer. And then, so I initially went 5-0, and I actually was able to take that 5-0 record the first five rounds, uh, that they were like, hey, you know, let's put him on stream versus Toler Webb. Toler Webb, if I recall, is a world champion, uh, senior division though, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm like always forgetting these little things. Uh, but Toler Webb is a phenomenal player. One of the best to ever do it. it. I was like scared, like despite me being a streamer, I'm not used to going up on stage at a regional. This is my first time I ever got live stream. And I was, I was just smiling the whole time, man. Like right here, I'm not, but like, you'll see, hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm like, I'm like giddy the whole match. I, th I ended up taking a game off of Toler, uh, which I was really proud of because he's like a player I really look up to. Um, but yeah, what I'm actually gonna do uh, is I'll be going over this on my Patreon. I'll just like talk about, you know, how my match went, um, what I could have done better because I did end up losing this match and this was my first uh, loss of the day. That being said, this team, interestingly enough, was the team that won it all. So Toler, Justin, and Yotan all built this team together. It's a uh, Pope Tusk the the ninth. Um, it's it's like a it's a great Tusk Talonflame team. It's an archetype that we've covered a lot on the channel. Uh, it's very similar to what I'm running, but it also has uh, Gothitelle on it. Uh, and what really gave me trouble here was the T Tar. This was a very very fast T Tar that was really difficult for me to adjust to. And I'll be going over why the matchup was so rough on the Patreon video um, that'll go up tomorrow. But yeah, this was like my first loss of the day. 
Uh, and it was really like, I, I, I knew it was like basically going into it, seeing the T-Tar, I'm like, slow T-Tar I can deal with. Fast T-Tar, it's, it's a little bit more complicated and I didn't like the matchup, so I just considered like, okay, turbo T-Tar, can't do it. Um, just glad I don't have to face that again. Uh, and then the very next match, who do I pull? I end up pulling Yotam, who is running the exact same team. I take a game off of him as well, and then lose the next two. So at this point, I am now 5-2. I've lost to the same team twice. The team that just so happened to win the entire tournament when Justin ran it. Um, I end up winning versus Emin, uh, Evan Mutation. He was running a Dondozo team. My Dondozo matchup's very flowcharty. We'll talk about them in the breakdown. And then my final match, my win it in. Had I won this one, I'd proceed to day two. Uh, and I would have popped off. I would have been so happy to get day two at a regional. Uh, but I end up losing. It was a Sarah Ledge matchup. Sarah Ledge is a little bit of a rough matchup. I'll explain why that is in a second. But now that we have like the basic overview of how my day went, what I faced, um, let's talk about the team. So yeah, so this team is extremely basic. I decided to take it back to basics. Uh, I wanted to just play a fundamentals based team that uh, allowed me to practice my board positioning and just be more or less neutral into like every matchup. Like this team has some positive matchups, I think, um, but it's mostly neutral. So going over the members, this is a very basic choice spec slaughter main, 252, 252. Mostly spreads are that. They are 252, 252. Uh, the very next, uh, and we're running Dazzling Gleam, Moonblast, Power Gem, Shadow Ball. I ran four defense because, you know, if I want to somehow eat a hit, you know, I guess I have a better chance at like a lot of those rolls with four defense. Like I said, with basic EV spreads like this, it's more just vibes. It's very vibes based. Like, oh yeah, I take a sucker bunch from King Gambit. Oh, it's Life Orb? Never mind, I don't. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so like that's that's just something that happened there. Like, you know, I'm just running like a Spex Flutter Man, Terra Fairy. It's very fun. Um, I'm going to talk about Gothitelle next rather than the Great Tusk because Gothitelle Fluttermane is one of my most common leads. So this Gothitelle is actually very fast. Um, I'm running this amount of speed mainly because this uh, Gothitelle wants to outspeed basically every other Gothitelle and still do the things that it wants to do as far as living things. It's not an offensive Pokemon. Um, the special defensive side, I just gave myself a pretty decent roll. Uh, to be able to tank a um, Specs Flutter main Shadow Ball. And then the physical side, it's more or less dumped after I got all that um, speed in there. Uh, don't ask me what the spread does, I forgot that sort of thing. Like I've already forgotten half this team at this point, even though, because I've stopped using it, it was yesterday. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Gothitelle and Flutter main is one of like my best modes. What I like to do is I, lead, I like to lead off with Gothitelle and Flutter main in a lot of situations where um, I know I want to go Trick Room. And that might sound counterintuitive, but the way that I ended up playing this team was the Flutter main in open team sheet is just extremely threatening when you see Helping Hand Gothitelle. You see that I have choice specs, I have Terra Fairy Dazzling Gleam, and I can Helping Hand that. If you end up leading off with something that takes the hit neutral that isn't particularly bulky, um, then you're just gonna lose two Pokemon in a lot of situations. Because of that, that immense threat, a lot of players found it more, um, they, they found it like they found themselves wanting to go for just like an attack into the flutter main to like secure a KO and they would almost ignore the Gothitelle entirely or resign themselves to getting faked out with certain Pokemon. Uh, for example, uh, if I was facing like Mouse Ape and the uh, Ape decides to pop its Terra rather than the Mouse Hold uh, and I want to go for like fake out on that Mouse Hold, they'll usually just like either accept it or like protect on that and then like flutter main gets to attack for free. Otherwise, it's like whatever. Basically, all the pressure is coming from the Flutter main on this lead more than anything. That's the basic gist of it. Uh, what I would end up doing is I would just go for a choice specs attack into whatever I could definitely secure a KO on. And rather than helping hand it, fake out or whatever, a lot of the time, I would just straight up trick room. <laughs> so what I, the analogy that I like to use with this team um, or with this lead was it's not really a Flutter main Gothitelle lead. You play it, you could play it like that. You like you could play it like the helping hand choice spec stuff, you know, the good stuff. Uh, but the way that I like to play it was like a choice scarf final gambit annihilate. So I would basically KO something, accept that my flutter main's gonna go down due to the partner KOing it, and then get a free trick room off. This is where the magic happens. So Torkoal is a Pokemon that could come in immediately. I'm just running very basic spread, you know, max HP, four defense, max special attack, zero speed, quiet nature. Uh, charcoal, Drought, Protect, Eruption, Flamethrower, and Clear Smog. So, because I'm a Gothitelle, and not some other Trick Room setter like an Indeed or whatever, or, or a Ferregoraf, um, the opponent usually can't switch. They're just kind of stuck. The way that you tend to beat Torkoal is priority moves, or switching, or uh, something like that. Uh, terrastalizing to live the hit. 
Gothitelle trapping things in with Torkoal won me almost every one of my first five matches. It is like my default mode. The way I like to play the team is do like if if I think that this is like a easy free turn one win basically by doing that or game one win by doing that i'll just go for this like little flow charty oh i ko you i get up trick room i go for like helping hand eruption terrifier and like sweep everything that worked for the most part like being able to get that and then like threaten the trick room on the next game getting those mind games off uh where they like just lost to the torkoal so they'll do anything to stop the trick room on the gothitelle they'll start faking out the gothitelle no because then game two you just adjust and you actually do like the terra fairy moon blast or terra fairy dazzling gleam helping hand combo and just take that KO because now the Gothitelle, they're looking at that thing like if, I, if they get off Trick Room, I lose. Like they adjust and it like bites them in the butt. Like that's how I played almost every one of my first five rounds. And I almost feel no need to go more in depth than that because it's just how all of them went. Um, so yeah, like that's like the first mode. The, the last Pokemon that you bring like depends. Um, if you're facing off versus like in DD Armors, obviously you don't want to bring Torkoal a lot of the time, but um, you know, that's like what Dragonite's for. If, if you find yourself like facing off versus a very fat team like a don dozo team like the flow chart for don dozo is actually pretty straightforward you do exactly what i just said but under trick room you just go for like a clear smog versus the don dozo and then you're actually free to go for psychics and like uh flamethrowers under the sun because torkoal can after a clear smog you know gets rid of the attack boost in the dozo uh torkoal can eat a hit it can eat like a wave crash or an, or an earthquake uh and your eruptions do a decent amount despite it being a resisted hit because of how low don dozo's special offense is and then the last Pokemon is the King Gambit. <laughs> this is a Terra Flying Assault Vest King Gambit. You might be saying, why are you running Guillotine? And in every bit of testing that I played, um, I almost never clicked Low Kick, so I swapped it to Terra Blast. And then I never clicked Terra Blast. But my Dondozo matchup was heavily reliant on me getting this uh, little flow chart going. So I decided that I really liked just putting the Oko move on there because it was a get out of jail free card. And while I never O-code anything during the tournament, there were a lot of situations where it could have potentially saved me. Um, and that's like the point of it. It's a three move Pokemon, more or less. Like I just threw on guillotine there because I wanted to get out of jail free. Like I said, um, let's say that you're in a 1v1 situation where your King Gambit is left on the field versus an Iron Hands. In no situation would the Iron Hands ever lose that unless you get a million Iron Head crits and flinches. The chances of you getting the first Iron Head flinch is the exact same as you getting the guillotine. So just go for it. That's literally it. Like, it, there's not much thought behind that other than it is a possible get out of jail free card. Same with the Don Dozo matchup. Um, let's say that the Torkoal flowchart doesn't go right. They manage to pick it apart. You still have that Terra Flying guillotine. Because um, you're a King Gambit and you're bulky, you're able to take an order up at plus two. You're able to take a wave crash at plus two, especially if Sun's still up. They have to go for the Earthquake versus you. They have to call out the um, the Terra Flying, and a lot of times they're not willing to do it. So most of the time, you're guaranteed at least two attempts on the Guillotine versus Don Dozos. Never landed the Guillotine versus the Don Dozo. My floor chart worked perfectly fine. Uh, in my matchup versus um, Evan in particular, like the, the flow chart like really saved me. Like I actually just stuck to the plan and and help me get out of there. So yeah, uh, you might be wondering why am I running Turbo King Gambit? I found that Turbo King Gambit actually wasn't too bad. Uh, in a lot of situations, it was actually pretty helpful. Uh, if you haven't noticed, my Dragonite is, what well, you haven't noticed because I'm tired and I'm forgetting to cover Pokemon. Uh, my Dragonite's very fat, but it's also got a little bit of speed investment. It's 107. I was originally 106, but then not outspeeding Dragapult for some reason bugged me. So I just decided to do that. <laughs> Um, and it just hits the attack bump with 204, because you see it goes from 196 to 198. Uh, we're running Tailwind, Extreme Speed, Terra Blast, Ice Spinner. So with King Gambit and Dragonite, uh, this is actually a very scary lead for a lot of things, because Dragonite is a Pokemon that gets off Tailwind pretty much every single game. Multi-Scale makes it so it can eat like uh, a Freeze Dry into like uh, any other hit, basically, unless they want to go for like Freeze Dry Moon Blast, in which case you don't live that, but you could also just Terra Flying and live it. Um, what this allows me to do is if I'm facing off versus uh, like a bulkier but like fast-ish team, uh, my King Gambit under Tailwind will now be able to confirm KOs uh, under Tailwind versus things it wouldn't have otherwise. So let's say um, I'm under Tailwind versus a Terra Steel Golden Go, and my Fluttermane goes for the Choice Specs um, Shadow Ball. It's not going to KO because Golden Go is like very fat. Uh, well, because we're under Tailwind, 
the King Gambit will actually be able to out outspeed the Golden Go and confirm the KO with uh, Assurance. And as far as the speed tier goes, I'm actually specifically outspeeding uh, base 111s, which is Mouse Hold. And that one's a little bit of a weird one to outspeed. But in my testing, I actually found King Gambit really, really hates taking a Super Fang. So being able to avoid that Super Fang by just hitting the Mouse Hold with like Dazzling Gleam into Assurance was actually something that was very helpful. Um, and it did actually save me in one of my matches. So I, I, I don't regret running Turbo King Gambit. But yeah, other moves is just Sucker Punch and Iron Head. Not much else about it. Uh, the you know, bulk is basically just dumped. After I hit like the 196 to 198 jump, I just like put 148 HP and then like four HP, uh, four defense, four special defense. Not too um, complicated. Uh, Terrifying King Gambit also pairs very well with Great Tusk. Like I said, um, Intimidate is like super good into Dragonite and Great Tusk. So having a Defiant Pokemon to avoid that is super good. And also Assault Vest King Gambit just does like super, super good into Icy Wind um, Iron Bundle, which if they hit you with an Icy Wind, all of a sudden you're at plus two attack. They're not going to have a good time. It is very basic. Like I said, I feel I feel almost dumb explaining this team the way I do because it is a basic team. This is a fundamentals based team with a freaking <laughs> with a guillotine slapped onto it. Yeah, like that's basically it. Uh, we're Sash, Great Tusk, Close Combat, Headlong Rush, uh, Earthquake Protect. If I could change one thing, I think I might have dropped Earthquake for Ice Spinner and put Low Kick on my Dragonite instead. Um, but I found Earthquake to be very helpful. Uh, Dragonite plus Great Tusk Lead is really good into teams that lack Intimidate because what you're able to do is just go for Protect Tailwind, always get off the Tailwind, and then the next turn, um, your Dragonite can go for like E-Speed into whatever, and then you uh, KO Confirm with Terra Ground Earthquake. Uh, if you end up wanting to bring King Gambit in the back, you're able to Terra Flying that as well. It's an Intimidate deterrent because they don't want to go for Intimidate into your Great Tusk when Defiant is an option for the King Gambit. Terra Flying allows you to just go for, you know, your Terra Ground Earthquakes next to this thing and not worry about the KO. Gothitel, uh, its physical defense allows it to very easily take a Terra Ground Earthquake. So and after you Helping Hand it as well, it takes the Helping Handed one. So you can actually lead off uh, versus teams that are just naturally slower uh, versus Great Tusk, like in DD Armor Rouge. Um, and because it's open team sheet, you can tell which ones have uh, you can tell which ones have wide guard and which ones don't. So versus that, there's actually a lot of situations where you would just helping hand Terra Ground Earthquake and get the KO. Uh, Dragonite's also quite good into Indeedee Armor Rouge. You're able to go for Ice Spinner into Extreme Speed uh, while also just going for Terra Ground Earthquake. So that's another mode. That's actually something that I would tend to do in testing versus Indeedee Armor Rouge was just lead off Great Tusk Dragonite. And I would just Ice Spinner, Terra Ground Earthquake, and then E-Speed everything to uh, get KO'd. Uh, because, you know, as it turns out, Armor Rouge doesn't like taking Earthquake into E-Speed. It just doesn't. <laughs> it hates it, actually. So yeah, very nice, uh, solid lead with that. Uh, trying to think of other things. Versus like Mouse Ape, you would basically always lead off with Great Tusk Fluttermane and just go for like um, Specs Dazzling Gleam plus like uh, Headlong Rush. Or you could even go like Dragonite Great Tusk and go for your Tailwind plus, because uh, you're multi-scale, you like live everything. You just go for like your Tailwind plus Terra Ground Earthquake and then do it again the next turn and everything drops. So... Like I said, fundamentals based. Uh, if I were to change Dragonite to a Talonflame, I would 100% swap the Great Tusk to be Life Orb in that case, because I think that would have been a little bit stronger. Uh, but because I was running Dragonite, I just like, you know, I, I just wanted to go ahead and go with the Sash, because it was it was better under Trick Room. It was more like reliable for switching in on things. I wouldn't have to worry about like losing it to an Iron Bundle uh, Hydro Pump immediately. So I, I like that about it. Uh, one more thing I want to note, prior to this tournament, uh, the team that had won Vancouver was actually a team with the same six Pokemon as mine, but the Gothitelle was actually a Lilligant. Uh, that's Nails' uh, Lilligant Sun team. I actually, I built this team independently of that, like a week prior to that winning, uh, but I adjusted a few things to make it so I was positive into that sort of mirror match, and I did face it, and I did win, uh, but my matchup into Sun was basically, I would almost always lead off Gothitelle plus Dragonite, uh, and because I'm Terra Grass on the Gothitelle, they would usually want to go for Spore into the Gothitelle turn one, not Spore, Sleep Powder into the Gothitelle turn one, because there was obviously a Lumberry on Dragonite. I could actually burn the uh, Terra to live that hit uh, and uh, just go for like an Ice Spinner into the um, Lilligant that next turn, bring it down to Sash, and then it's like, okay, yeah, what does it do? Like, I'm, I'm a Dragonite with like multi-scale like even if they want to go for like helping hand eruption i just like eat the hit so in a lot of situations it almost felt like the um 
it sort of just felt like the the Lilligant Torkoal matchup was free. Like you had Fake Out to pressure the Lilligant to want to go for Terra Gra or for, uh, for Terra Ghost, and it almost never would. Um, you had the option to Trick Room on them and <laughs> bring in your own Torkoal and beat them, which at that point you're playing Speed Ties, but. I've never really found it to be too much of an issue. I wouldn't go for it usually, but like that is a thing that you could do. Uh, there would be some matchups where I would see that the Lilligant, um, the Lilligant was like probably gonna want to pop Terra Ghost anyways. If I were to learn, if I if I were to lead off Gothitel, uh, in versus those ones, I actually found my flow chart to usually just be lead off Great Tusk Dragonite and go for Protect and Tailwind turn one, and then that next turn. They would be almost forced to go for Leaf Storm or a Sleep Powder into Great Tusk or Helping Hand their Eruption. And that just allowed me to burn the Terra on my Dragonite and go for like uh, Terra Blast into whatever I needed to. Um, and with like obviously Tailwind up, uh, Fluttermane in the Sun with Protosynthesis will never get outsped by um, Lilligant. So yeah, basic flowchart in the Sun is just get off Tailwind or KO Lilligant and then get up, uh, get Fluttermane in and just spam Dazzling Gleam. Because that team does want to run like Great Tusk in the back. Um, you do actually need Sun, you need either Tailwind or Sun to be up to outspeed the Great Tusk because that team's Great Tusk is Choice Scarf, which will outspeed Fluttermane otherwise, so, yeah. Uh, sorry if I'm not, like, going super in-depth, I just want to talk about the team, you know, nonchalantly or casually, like, just notes, just, I'm, I'm sort of just spewing my thoughts about the team in the video because I'm, like, super tired, uh, but yeah, I, I think that's it, it's just the basic gist of the team, um, if you have trouble piloting it, watch some of my videos. I played a lot of uh, games with this uh, team on my uh, live stream, so yeah. Sorry if this is like a really unfocused video. I'm literally like falling asleep right now because I've been at work all day and I got home at 2 a.m. from this tournament, but uh, I did pretty good. I got 40 points, went 6-3, and three, placed top 124 or 128, so yeah. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed, leave a like. Sorry I'm so tired. <laughs> have a nice night.